How's it going guys? This is Anthony with Innovation and Tech Today, live at the USA Science and Engineering Festival. I'm here with Dr. Daryl Lee Baines, founder of Interactive Science Programs. How are you today, Dr. David? Doing just fine, thank you. How are you? Doing very well. I loved your show up there. I must thank say, you. is this your first time at the festival? No, this is my third time actually. Oh really? So I've done, I, I try and do different demonstrations each time I come. This is the third one that I've done, so six years I've been doing this. Well, it was really exciting. I mean, fire, popping balloons, you know, everyone's, everyone loves that. Yep. Um, so tell me a little bit about Interactive Science Programs. Interactive Science Programs, we are the largest science and math outreach company in the nation owned and operated by African Americans. And I travel around the country and internationally showing kids how to make, showing kids how fun math and science can be and showing teachers how to make science and math fun in the classroom and hands-on and interactive. Uh, what was the initial inspiration for that? Um, I, I was at the University of Pittsburgh and while the, the, the professors were doing a good job teaching the college students, when they went to teach an elementary level doing demonstrations, they couldn't make the connection of taking a, a scientific idea and making it simple for the kids to understand. So what I did is I started doing it myself and now I, they don't even go out and do it anymore. Right. I put them out of business. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Well, I mean, mixing entertainment and edu uh, education is not the easiest thing in the world. No, you it's know, called edutainment. Edutainment, yeah. And, you know, there's good ways to go about it. There's bad ways to go about it. You know, what makes your way unique? Or what, how, what's your approach? I'm, fo I'm focusing on telling a story. That presentation you saw was sort of a whole story. Yeah. I'm telling the story. Everybody likes a good story, whether you're looking at a movie or reading a book. Yeah. It's the same thing. And so I try and teach teachers how to teach their classes that way so that you're telling a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it culminates. And as you go along, kids are doing hands-on science to learn the parts of the story that you're telling them. Totally. And what do you want people to leave your presentations thinking? That science is happening around them all of the time and that they can understand what's happening. Right? I showed them the fuel that they use for the Falcon Heavy and for the space shuttle. Well, if you can understand that, then you can understand rocket science. So that they see, oh, maybe this is something I could do. This is not really that complicated. Definitely. What do you think is really holding back the growth of STEM education right now? Schools that aren't teaching science the right way. Right. It's too much read something, answer the questions. Yeah. You know, instead of let's do an experiment and see what we learn from that and then build on our knowledge. What we did today was build on each knowledge, each thing was a building block to the thing at the end. We're going to do a little live experiment here for you. Can you tell me a little bit about this experiment? Well, first, what I want to do is just show you something. This is a meteorite. This is part of the meteorite that made the Barringer Crater in Arizona. Really? So if you've seen that big hole in Arizona, oh, yeah. three quarters of a mile wide, this is part of the piece of, it? Piece of the meteorite that made that hole. That's crazy. So this is one piece. You see how heavy that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. The whole thing was about half a football field. This happened around 60,000 years ago. This was going around the asteroid belt. Two asteroids hit together and then this came and hit us. So this piece of meteorite that you're touching is over four billion years old. Oh my God. Billion with a B. It's older than your grandma. That's crazy. It's a little bit. It's crazy. It's heavy. Yes. These are just floating around in space. That's kind of terrifying. I don't know. Yeah. Very cool. This was part, and this was a part of, you said it was the size of a football field as well? Half of a football field, a football the one field. that made that hole. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's crazy. That's really, really cool. So, I carry this around with me so that students can touch it, and just the fact that this is four billion years old starts to spark thinking and memory, and man, I think I, that's so cool. I think I'd like to learn more about that kind yeah, of thing. It's easy to forget those kind of things, you know. Absolutely. Um, and I, kids are like re always interested in that kind of stuff too. And one of the things I love to do is to show teachers how to make science fun and easy. So this is a juice bottle, okay? And in that juice bottle, we have a balloon. Just a punch balloon. I'm gonna stick the punch balloon in the bottle. And then I'm gonna stretch the top of the balloon over the top of the bottle, okay? Awesome. All right, I'm gonna blow air in this balloon. What's gonna happen to the balloon? Uh, it's gonna inflate. It's gonna inflate, okay? I'm gonna gotta blow Go real ahead. hard. Sounds good. Okay. I put my hand over top so the air doesn't come off. Yeah. What happens if I move my hand? Uh, it's probably going to deflate, I would say. Uh -uh, but I'm saying if I move my hand, though. No. Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> now, how does it, now, how does that happen? How does that I got to say. This is an easy experiment on differential air pressure. The r only reason I could blow this balloon up is because I had a hole in the side. Uh. So 
air has mass, it takes up room. If I cover that hole with my finger, the air in the bottle can't get out. I can't blow the balloon up. See what I mean? Because yeah, there's no yeah, way for yeah, the yeah. air to go. I would have never guessed that. So once I move my finger, then the air can come out the hole. Once I eat, cover it up, then it stays the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So now let's ask my brother here since you're looking. I saw the news this morning, NBC4. Where you? Let me ask you oh, that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. Right now, this balloon is hanging in the bottle. Okay. I want to inflate the balloon without blowing air in the top. Trying to remember my old okay. uh, because it's the container is kind of the container has air in it. Is it inside, so the if I want to if I want to make the balloon get bigger, what do I have to do with the air in the bottle? You squeeze. I got to get it out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, good. <laughs> that's so cool. This yeah. is differential air pressure. This is high school yeah. physics, and it's, yeah. it's cheap. Yeah. It cost you nothing. Yeah. What did you say? A juice bottle and a balloon is all you need, and that's, okay. that's great. That's a great way just to like teach a simple lesson too. That's a really good way, like showing you know just the way, what you do as well. You know, yeah. just nice show. You this good morning, visual. That's inspired me to come over here. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah. can't believe this. Hey, this worked out pretty yeah. well. Yeah. And what was your name as well? Eric. Oh, very nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us as well. Anthony, Mission Tech Today. Awesome. Oh, hey, thank you so much. Thanks for hey, showing no that off. Uh, very nice uh, talking with you today and enjoy the rest of the festival. Well, now, since we're doing an interview, I have an interview question for you. Yes. What is the one question you have in science that has not been answered yet? That I have in science? That you have. I mean, it's kind of all over the place. I'm actually more on the tech side okay. more than anything. One question that absolutely has not been answered yet. I mean, I, black holes are something that just fascinate me, and yeah. just like what is inside of a black hole, and I, I don't actually don't even know if that's been answered or not I technically. Don't, I don't know if it can be because if something goes in there, it don't come out. Right. So how would you know? I think it's just one of the most fascinating things in the world because it's just this anomaly in space that's frankly terrifying. Right. You know, that could be a gateway to another dimension for all we know. Theoretically, because in the in the middle of each galaxy is supposed to be a black hole. Right. So if you go in a black hole, do you spill out into a white hole? Do you spill out into something else? You come out into like some weird alternate universe. Absolutely. Up and down and, yeah. you know, it's totally different. Cats and I don't dogs know. living together. Bizarro world. Who knows? Cats and dogs breaking from the fly. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> hey, thank you. Really, thank you so much. Oh, we, we're going to wrap this up today. Right. It's been Anthony with Innovation and Tech Today with Dr. Daryl Lee Baines.